What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and in this video I'm gonna open up the books on the brand new 15 Plex that I just purchased. So I'm gonna show you all the finances, all the numbers, and if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how much money I'm going to make on this 15 Plex. So with all of that being said, let's jump into it. All right guys, the last 10 days has been a total whirlwind. And if you don't know why, you can go and watch this video up here. It shows you how I spent $4.6 million in the course of 10 days. Now, after putting this video out there, I had a ton of awesome comments and a lot of people said, Chandler, we wanna see the breakdown on these purchases. We wanna see what you paid for them. We wanna see how much money they're gonna make you. We wanna see all of the numbers. And so can you please make a video breaking this down? So in this video, I'm gonna cover all of the numbers, but I want you to get the backstory because the backstory is what makes purchases like these so fun. Now, if you watch my channel, you know about a year ago, I purchased a 32 plex. If you wanna learn more about that, you can click this link and go watch that video. Now, what you don't know is the person I purchased the 32 plex from is the same person that I just purchased this 15 plex from. And so over the course of the last year, we've been in communication with this seller, doing everything we can to get them to the point where they're ready to sell the 15 plex. Now, I'm not gonna give you all of the details. However, I will tell you that they were very hesitant to sell because they thought they wanted to hold on to it. And they also thought they might potentially want to sell it to their family. And interestingly enough, their family decided they didn't wanna buy it. However, last minute, we did get in a little bit of competition with someone that was an extended family member that wanted to purchase the property. And that's what made us go in with an original offer of 1.4 million, but end up getting the property under contract at 1.5. Now, would I have preferred to purchase this at 1.4? 100%. However, at 1.5, I was very confident that I could make the numbers work. And it was really sketchy early on because I really wanted this property. However, I didn't want to overspend and I wanted to make sure that the numbers worked before I just jumped on it. And so bumping the purchase price made me a little bit uncomfortable. However, it still met my criteria. And so I was still willing to jump on the purchase. Now it was time for us to jump into the due diligence. Now, during due diligence, we found a couple of issues. First off, the roofs were pretty worn. And when I say pretty worn, the one side of them was ripped up pretty bad. Now, they were still shedding water and we didn't have any major leaks in the units. However, I knew they were gonna be something that needed to be replaced very soon. On top of that, the pavement where all of the parking was, was trashed. There were lots of cracks, there's lots of other issues, and that's something that long-term was going to be very expensive to replace. Right now we're thinking we can just patch and fix it. However, if we don't get it patched and fixed immediately, it is something that we might have to scrape up and completely redo because we can't put another layer on top. And so that was going to be very expensive to get fixed and it was something we needed to do immediately. On top of that, one of the units was totally trashed. We also had windows that had a lot of perspiration in between the panes and a couple other things. And so we put together a list of everything that we wanted back before we were willing to go through with the purchase. Now, to be transparent with you, I didn't need all of these things fixed. Would I have liked them all fixed? Yes, 100%. However, some of them were things that we could have gapped out over time and fixed over time and they weren't essential. And so when I do this, I usually look and say, what is essential? I figure out what that price is and I make sure that I ask for at least double that because usually the seller will give you half of what you ask for. That's just a rule I've come to find. However, that isn't always the rule. That's just something that I try to shoot for. And that doesn't mean I'm making up stuff. It just means I'm really getting into detail on the smallest things and putting an expense with them and getting everything bid out because I want the stuff I need to be paid for, for the deal to make sense. And usually to get that, you need a little bit of give and take. And so you're gonna bring everything forward. Now, again, this wasn't me bringing BS stuff. These were all things that needed to be fixed. However, if I would have gotten half what I asked for, I still would have accepted the deal. What was really cool is I put everything I needed and I ended up getting all of it. 
So the seller was willing to completely replace the roofs, which was a huge win, and they were willing to give me all of the money that I had asked for to replace the apartment, the windows, and the driveway or the parking lot that was having issues. I ended up getting $26,000 back for all of the fixes. That means the pavement where the parking lot was, the windows, and the one apartment that was trashed. I got a brand new roof that the seller put on before we took ownership, which I was totally pumped about. On top of that, the seller had also agreed to pay 2% of closing costs or up to 2% of closing costs. And anything I didn't use for closing costs, I was going to receive in a credit. Now, on top of getting an incredible deal on this property, and I'm gonna come back and explain to you why it's an incredible deal, but on top of getting a good deal from the seller, I also was able to lock in some unreal financing. And the way I was able to do this is first off, I have a relationship with a credit union that I use for everything. However, I also was able to get some competition involved from out of state and really nickel and dime them on my rates and terms. And so just to kind of set the stage, usually for a commercial loan, you get really crappy rates. So way higher than what you're getting for normal home or other purchase, but you're also locked into a loan that's usually on a 25 year AM. You usually need a 30 or 35% down and you have the rates that are only locked for five years. So rates are changing. You're on a 20 year AM. You're in a situation where it's just not a good loan. With my lender, I was able to negotiate them down to get a 3.7% interest rate. I locked that rate in for 10 years on a 25 year AM and I was able to get a substantially lower down payment. On top of getting a lower down payment, I also had that 2% that I got from the seller to go towards closing costs and I get to keep the rest as a credit. And I was able to negotiate so that my closing costs were under a half percent. That means I got 1.5% from the seller that now just gets to go towards my down payment. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, Chandler, that sounds unreal, there's no way. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've done a lot of commercial loans and a lot of other loans, and I've never worked a deal this good with my credit union. I think a lot of it is because I've done a ton of stuff through them and I've been able to build a relationship and I was able to get competition involved and I've proven myself that I'm able to go in and make a property a very good investment, not only for me, but for them because they know it's a safe investment. And so I think the combination of all of that is what put me in a place where I was able to get awesome financing. So now you understand my financing, now you understand the purchase price, and now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty stuff when it comes to my actual return on this property. But if you wanna walk through all of it with me, you can download my Excel sheet on my website. That's www.chandlerdavidsmith.com. You can get this exact spreadsheet and you can use it for your future deals to analyze properties. If you don't wanna download the spreadsheet or you just wanna use your phone, I also have an app with a simpler version of this that you can still use to run the numbers. You just plug in CDS Rental Calculator on the App Store and you can get that completely free as well. So you can use the app or the spreadsheet. And if you have any questions on how this works, you can again go to my website at www.chandlerdavidsmith.com and there's a video there that can run you through everything. So now that we've got the spreadsheet, let's jump into the numbers and show you how they work. So if we jump into the spreadsheet, you can see the cost of the property. I picked it up for $1.5 million. You've also got your cost to make rent ready. And in this section, this is where you would put in any expense you have to get the property to the point where you're going to have it at so that you can raise those rents or any renovations you need to do before you're at a place where you can start renting out the units. Now, obviously these units are filled, but the majority of them are in great shape. We do have little fixes we need to do, but a lot of them, we're just gonna be raising rents as tenants leases end. And so we can go in, we can bump up rents, we can clean up the property and where they're at, they really were just mismanaged. And so they're worth a lot more. And I'm gonna talk about that more as we go on. But my point with this is I got $26,000 back to make the fixes I need to get it rent ready. So I don't need to plug anything in here because of that $26,000 that I got back. And the truth is I'm not gonna use that $26,000 up front. I'm gonna use that over time. So I could even plug in a negative expense here 
because I got money that put me in a better cash situation for closing that I'm not necessarily going to need. Now, I'm not going to do that because I want these numbers to be super clean. I want you to look at them and be like, holy cow, Chandler killed it, and he's not fluffing those numbers at all. So we're just gonna leave that blank. Now, if we go into our closing costs, and you can't do this on the app, so you can just leave it, but uh, if you go into the app on here, you can actually put negative closing costs. What that's going to do is it's going to give you money back for your down payment so that your down payment is smaller and it'll adjust the return accordingly. So we're gonna put a negative 1.5%. And so you can see by doing that, that's actually going to lower the total capital required for our down. Now, if we go to the down payment, we're gonna plug in 25%. You're not gonna be able to do this on most loans. I got very lucky working this out. Another thing that's really cool, especially when we get down to total capital required, remember I got that negative 1.5% back, so I have to bring even less to closing, and I got that $26,000 back, which I'm not gonna include here, but it just made it so I had to bring a lot less to close. But according to this, without that $26,000, that meant I needed $358,000 to bring to close on this property. So that's what I needed for a down payment. If you go down to the next section, you'll see years to pay off. It's going to take 25. Again, that was a killer setup because the financing I worked out and I've got a 3.7% interest rate. So if we bump down to rents, this is where things get kind of fun. Now on this property, and I'm even gonna throw this up here for you. Um, the current rents were 650, 950, 650, 950, 650, 750, 650, 700, 725, 750, 950, 850, 700, 700, 700. That put the average rents at 755 per unit and that put the total gross rents per month at $11,325. So we're gonna plug in $11,325 and keep in mind, this is what the rents are at. This isn't what they're going to be. However, I wanted you to see a very transparent look of this property. So total rents, $11,325. Vacancy, I'm gonna run at 6%. Maintenance, I'm gonna run at 12%. Management, I have at 6%. And then for insurance, we have $2,287. For taxes, we have $16,700. A lot of you are probably calling BS on my insurance and maybe even on my taxes, but I'm in Idaho. So we don't have to worry about the flood insurance, tornado insurance, any of those other crazy insurances that I know nothing about because we don't have those issues in this area. And so insurance is substantially cheaper here. And when it comes to taxes, that's what's great about living in Idaho is your property taxes, not that insane. For a $1.5 million purchase price to have $16,000 a year in taxes, I'm pretty pumped about that. And anybody that shops real estate in other areas is pumped about that too. So you can see my total expenses. All of this is broken down on the spreadsheet. But if you jump over to your cash on cash return, you're going to see that it's a 467 you're also gonna see that we're just shy of a 6% cap rate. Now, right now, a lot of you are saying, Chandler, that's a totally crappy deal. Well, here's the reality. A lot of people are buying deals in this range. I would say a six cap is about where most people are buying in my market right now. However, this was severely mismanaged, and we're gonna talk about that more, but um, that's where the numbers were at when I purchased this property. That means it's cash flowing only $16,000 a year for a very large investment. That's where you get that 4.67% cash on cash return. Now, this is where stuff starts to get fun. Now, one thing that's unique about this property is some of the rents had already been raised. As you heard before, some of the units were already at 950 and all of these units are the same. So even if you don't know anything about real estate investing, if you go in and you see four of the units are filled at 950, and then you've got rents at 650 and 700, you know all these units you should be able to at least get to 950. Now, I know this market very well, and so I personally know that for a two bedroom apartment with two bathrooms and a two car garage, I should be able to pull 1100 on every one of these units. And I'm very confident about that. And six months from now, when I make a new video showing how I've raised the rents to that, I'm gonna be able to back up that claim. But for the sake of people out there that I know are going to call BS on the 1100, even though I'm gonna prove it to you in about six months, we're gonna run the numbers if all of the units are only at 950. Because at 950, we know three or four of the units 
we're already there. So if we go in here and we plug in 950 times 15, that puts us at $14,250. That immediately brings the cash on cash return up to a 12.22% return. That means our cash flow would go up to $43,779 every single year. Right off the bat, you know that even if you get the rents to 950 on this property, it's going to be a cash cow with over a 12% cash on cash return. But I know this market very well. I know what I can do to these units. Heck, I own 32 units right next to it and we've been able to raise the rents on all of those and so I'm very confident I'm gonna be able to get these rented at 1100. So now if we go in and instead of the 950, we replace that with 1100 times 15, you can see that my cash on cash return is going to go up to an 18%. You can also see that our cash flow goes up to $64,591. So if I can get my rents up to 1100, which I'm confident I can, and I'm gonna come back and make that video in six months to show you that we've done it, I'm going to have a cash flow of 64,000 $591, putting me at an 18% cash on cash return on my money. And guys, this is why I absolutely love investing in real estate. This is the freaking best. <laughs> because I was able to recognize that this property had a huge value add opportunity, and six months from now, this thing is going to be a cash cow. Now, the cash flow is awesome, that's great. But what's really cool about this property is the instant equity that I'm getting out of it. And if you don't know what instant equity is, it means that the property, when I purchased it, six months later is going to be worth way more. And the reason behind this is, like I said earlier, most people right now are willing to buy at a six cap in my area. So if you come in here and you look at these rents at 1100 and you look at the purchase price, you can see the cap rate is at an 8.91%. So if we go in here and raise the purchase price to $2.2 million, you can see you're just above a six cap. That means that by raising rents, adding value to this property, and getting the cash flow to where it's at, I literally could turn around and sell this property for $700,000 more than I bought it a year later. Now, if you wanna do fun math on that, I only spent $350,000 on this property in a down payment. That means I literally would get double my money back and all the money I had invested if I were to turn around and sell it. I could take my $350,000 and make $700,000 off of it a year later. Now, I have no intention of turning around and selling this in a year and making $700,000 because I love the cash flow and I love the principal pay down. And that's the next thing I wanna show you. If you go and switch the purchase price back to 1.5 million, and then you push this little tab, that amortization tab at the bottom, you can see on my principal pay down in my first year, I'm gonna have $27,885 in principal pay down. That's another 27, almost $28,000 in a return I'm getting of money that I'm putting back into the property. So not only do I have $700,000 in equity, not only do I have principal pay down of $27,885, but I also have that huge cash flow of almost $65,000 a year. Now guys, this is why I love investing in real estate. I mean, you look at this, I've got huge cash flow, huge principal pay down, huge appreciation, which technically I've got a ton of forced appreciation because of that extra $700,000 in equity I've added to the property by adding value, and I'm gonna get huge tax benefits. This is why investing in real estate is the best because now I'm gonna have this cash flow and principal pay down and everything else forever on an absolutely killer property. Now, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell. And I know my last couple of videos have been vlog. I'm not gonna stop doing the vlog videos. I love the vlog videos. However, to show you these numbers, I gotta sit down and show you the nitty gritty and I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you want a breakdown like this, showing you step-by-step -step how to invest, how to go from zero doors of rental real estate to over 100 doors of rental real estate, you can click the link below and purchase my real estate investing course. And I've included a code so you can get $50 off. And if you don't wanna buy that, that's awesome. I put awesome content here on the channel. You just gotta make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, 
and hit the little bell. Now guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you in the future videos where my goal is to help you to build a huge passive income. Thanks guys, have a great day.